Happy Welcome everyone to the very first service design show live episode or if you're watching their recording welcome to this recording of the live episode uh for the people who don't know me i'm mark fontaine um and you might have seen my face in one of the previous service design show episodes that i've been running in the last well i think it's 18 months almost uh, like one i have here um if you haven't seen the service design show yet be sure to check out servicedesignshow.com uh, and that will take you to a YouTube page, but there's also a podcast. And of course, you're watching to this uh, uh, Facebook live event. I'm joined in this very first live episode by a former guest. I just checked it and it was episode 20 and it's Mauricio Manez. Did I, am I saying that right, Mauricio? Yes, yes, it's cool. How would you say it in uh, Brazilian? Manez. Yes. Yeah. Mauricio, you've been um, uh, a guest on the show and I've been in touch with you uh, quite often uh, in the past year. I've been uh, exchanging ideas and then basically we came up with the thought, you know, uh, there's a topic we'd like to explore. Mm -hmm. uh, why not do an interview? And then I said, you know, why, uh, why wouldn't we want to involve some of the people uh, out of the service design community? And that's how basically this idea of the live episode was born, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> um, uh, embracing prototypes always. <laughs> innovating, into innovating yeah. and prototyping. Uh, for the, I see that there are people watching live out of the 31 volt studio. Uh, you know, let's make this as interactive as possible. Uh, feel free to comment, leave a comment, leave a comment where you're from. Uh, Mauricio and I can see those comments. Uh, so let me see. Here's uh, uh, a comment from Marcel. If you have any questions regarding to what Mauricio is saying, or if you have any comments, uh, please interact. Uh, and yeah, let's let's kick it off. Mauricio, um, for the people who don't know who you are, uh, could you share a little bit about your background and how did you end up in the place where you are today? Okay, so. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, everybody. It's afternoon here in Utrecht. Yeah. <laughs> here in, in Savannah, Georgia, it's 8, no, 8 a.m. Um, well, I started the, the path to service design back in 2006. I was working as an IT manager, developing web development. And uh, at some point, I started to research about a better way to do IT development. Mm. And uh, that's how I, I got into service design. Well, you're, you're going fast. <laughs> <laughs> Transitioning yeah. for IT development into service design, what happened? Um, after a couple of uh, major big development, system development, um, and uh, how hard it was to understand the users, and then be sensible to what they need. Uh, I start to research uh, an alternative to do this better. Mm -hmm. So, um, and uh, by out of desk research, I found out uh, service design and got in contact with the SDN uh, headquarters in Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, Birgit Mager was really welcoming. And um, since then, uh, I got a a master, I see that uh, Augusta, a uh, colleague of mine, my dear friend, is uh, uh, was a colleague of mine in, during the master uh, mm. studies. And then I went to PhD, research in service innovation. And, and, and you then, didn't left the educational field uh, since, right? You're right now a yeah. uh, 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 teacher or lecturer at in yeah, Sofia, I, right? yeah. Here, uh, I'm a professor uh, of the service design, full-time professor of the service design uh, program at SCAD mm -hmm. in the United States, uh, and uh, it's it's been fun. And one of the yeah. the, the the things that I've uh, been working on is this uh, developing a discourse for service design. Mm -hmm. So. I'm, I'm uh, very much um, uh, interested in exposing 
service designed to outsiders to preach uh, outside of the core. Mm. Uh, so this is my topic now that I'm researching. All right. Um, the, the thing we'll be talking about in the next, uh, let's say, 20, uh, 25 minutes is um, we shared it already in the introduction uh, in the Facebook post. And it's, I summarize this as, um, you know, is service design a profession? And if so, what defines service design as a profession? And uh, what you added to that is how can we define service design without excluding ourselves or creating new silos? That's basically what we'll be talking about, right? Yeah, yes, it's true. Um, yeah. So the, 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 the main thing here, we're taking here at SCAD, we have a program that's uh, user experience. So you have a, a major in user experience and we have uh, a major in service design and we are inside the School of Design and uh, under the umbrella of the Industrial Design Program. Mm -hmm. So we, um, let's say, we share time and space a lot with these uh, other disciplines. Mm -hmm. And at some point you have to, okay, but what, what do I bring to the table? Uh, as a service designer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, you're right. Uh, what we've been seeing here is that uh, uh, we always, and when we see uh, our students working with industrial design students and um, UX, graphic design, we always bring some kind of a overarching perspective for everything. So, and then, so, we just welcome everybody on board. We try to orchestrate them uh, connecting the dots. And uh, this, in a sense, pose a, 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 a challenge to uh, develop a discourse that is mm. more like, oh, this is my part. This is your part. Exactly. And, uh, and, yeah, uh, cl claiming stuff. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, uh, and, and, and it actually, we see clearly, and our students understand this, that we are kind of uh, the bridge between the different <laughs> stakeholders. It, it's kind of our duty or our task to keep everybody on board during the whole process. <laughs> and, uh, of course, this has uh, a lot of uh, uh, implications, like how to assess what the user wants, the, the, all, all stakeholders involved in, a, in any process. So mm -hmm. it, it, it demands a, a very uh, interesting set, set of uh, capabilities and, and uh, techniques. So um, before we dive deeper mm -hmm. into that uh, topic, I want to welcome the people who are watching, uh, who joined in later live in this episode. Welcome, everyone. Uh, uh, feel free to share uh, this live episode as it's going on with the uh, people you know on your timeline. And uh, leave a comment and uh, let us know where you're from. And also, if you have any questions uh, or comments regarding what Mauricio is saying, uh, type them in. We can see them live. I can post them here uh, in the stream so we'll be able to respond. And let's make this as um, interactive exactly. as possible. Uh, we're not alone today, uh, Mauricio. That's good. Uh, people yeah, join good. in. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I guess, uh, Mark, it's interesting to, to, to I guess, uh, highlight again that as we, as we started, we are prototyping this. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> Please feel free, all uh, ones that, uh, everyone that's watching, please just um, ping and give Let us know how, how we can make yeah. this even more valuable. Yeah. So uh, somebody is uh, here uh, from Bristol with us. That's nice. Bristol, UK. Hi. Hi, Hi Richard. Richard. <laughs> yeah, leave comments. That's nice to, to be uh, able to yeah. interact with you guys. Um, yeah. Uh, Mauricio, so uh, actually we, uh, it's morning in, uh, in Savannah, it's afternoon here in Utrecht, and we were actually having this conversation, this exact conversation during lunch here. And we were talking about, you know, um, for instance, all, uh, often the comparison between UX and service design or anything related to digital and service design and what makes mm -hmm. service design difference, you know. 
Um, so <clears throat> my first question to you would be, how? why is this such an interesting topic for you? Why are you researching this topic? Why are you trying to create this discourse around it? Uh, because I truly believe that service design can bring a lot of value to uh, service. Mm -hmm. uh, name it. Right? Mm -hmm. We can, uh, and I've seen this happening. We we here at SCAD, we, um, we have the uh, CLC, the Collaborative Learning Center, where we work a lot with uh, major U.S. companies. And I, I can see uh, and, and those uh, projects, um, they they happen uh, by involving different majors. Hmm. So let's say Coca-Cola comes to SCAD, we assemble uh, a diverse group of students, and at the end, uh, we have to uh, deliver something to Coca-Cola or hmm. Delta Airlines hmm. or Disney, hmm. uh, Microsoft, Google. And uh, I can see clearly um, the um, ju just to 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 illustrate this when uh, when the projects are announced, uh, uh, each project has a list of majors that they uh, uh, usually require to be on board. And it's really interesting to see across all types of projects that there is a thread that uh, all of them ask for service designers. Mm. So sometimes there are like a, a, a very, I don't know, furniture focused project or graphic design or web or, but all of them always ask for service designers. So, and, and do they know what they are asking for? Yes, and, and, and they are asking for this person that keeps the dots connected. They, 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 they like uh, to have this um, uh, bird's view of whatever they are developing. Uh, it brings uh, value to, to the table. So that's the point uh, that um, uh, I guess the, the, the main interest of developing this type of discourse. And, and again, uh, we're not trying to be, uh, you know, to that, uh, to create the 10 commandments of service design. It's an ongoing thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, this discourse to be alive must be changing, must be evolving. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a walk. Okay, it's, it's a, a series of steps and it's evolving. So when, when I published this uh, first paper, I don't know if people can What's see What's the this. name of it? We can Google it probably. Yeah. Three overarching perspectives of service design, a touch point. Uh, so there was some uh, contribution. We propose, we are pro proposing three overarching perspectives for service mm. design. Mm. And then we are uh, now working on a new paper um, for, it, we, we will be a next step. So it's an evolving thing. Uh, uh, and uh, this is a very interesting uh, research we did. Uh, so what's the research about? What, what was the main objective of the research? The, the research started uh, by asking uh, 13 service designers across the world, how they would solve five different scenarios that we figure out was would be complex scenarios. So uh, the grad students at SCAD, they create five complex scenarios uh, mm -hmm. to, to be solved by service designers, sent them to 40 uh, uh, service designer across the world, 13 replied, mm -hmm. and it was kind of a briefing. Mm -hmm. And uh, from their replies, their text saying how they would tackle, how they would approach those five scenarios, we made a discourse analysis. And uh, we, th there's a way, a technique to, 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 to do this, and we found uh, three topics mm -hmm. uh, relating uh, uh, 
surrounding this, uh, uh, the way they approach uh, these five uh, scenarios. Mm -hmm. uh, one, it's called stories, one team, and one implementing. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really interesting to see that the the topic one that's called stories uh, in, evolve, involves uh, words as service, prototype, innovation, journey, mapping, maps, mm -hmm. design, mm -hmm. is a very strong one. So there's a, a ranking of uh, consistency on, on the discourse. So w the, within within the service design community within yeah, these 13 these services 13, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so but it's interesting that the 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 discourse the topic around mm -hmm. stories has a value of 9.45 so the higher the the more consistent yeah the the discourse around team intervention culture uh, organization people um change, co-creation has a, a consistent uh, load factor, we call mm -hmm. 4.1. So it's kind of half of mm -hmm. the consistency of the, the, the topic around stories, narrative, storytelling. And the third one we call implementing um, uh, the third one called implementing has a consistency factor of 2.79. Mm. Mm. So it's really interesting to see how the stories uh, uh, discourse the structure is really high consistently. Mm. Uh, so it's a, it's a kind of a, a narrative that we have really mm. well established. Mm. Then the, the team data co-creation drops mm. to Mm. Uh, half mm. so four and the implementing mm. is 2.79 so it's mm. it's it's mm. the weakest um so what does this tell you mauricio what does this say about service design as a profession it's, it's well that's what we try to to <laughs> understand here but um, so you have to summarize it i shared the link to the touchpoint article Okay, so um, what we see, but what, what we're trying to, 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 to make sense is definitely um, we know how to make sense of things. That's mm. why the, the topic of stories. So the, the, the topic involve words like stories, service, maps, mapping, um, um, prototype, innovation, journey, design, work. So those, that's our those, vocabulary. Yeah, the, our vocabulary is, is consistent. So those words, they occur together in a consistent manner mm -hmm. throughout the discourse. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's uh, interesting. So the, the, the topic one stories has 15, um, kind of uh, factors, uh, words that support this. The team, co-creation, intervention, uh, culture has 12, and the implementing, uh, the, the, the topic mm -hmm. of implementation has only seven. So there's only seven words mm -hmm. that consistently mm -hmm. appear throughout the discourse about implementing service design. So mm -hmm. there's a lack of words to to talk about implementing service design i, I think we all feel that <laughs> yeah, yeah that, uh, that's the point we uh we are writing this uh paper and uh, at some point we make this uh uh inference uh, uh as um we even say uh it's a questionable inference but this is what we feel as as uh the, so, yeah, this is uh, what we feel about this this product. Um, uh, so, just to to read you, so that aspect, so the, the implementing, 
leads the authors to infer a second questionable connection with the collective perception among service design academics and practitioners of a lack of implementation discourse in the related community. Mm. It's kind of a, it's a feeling, a feeling that we had, but now we have kind of a, a data, scientific evidence, <laughs> evidence to support this. And it's, it's, it's really visual. I don't, I don't think people will be able to yeah, see. Yeah, you can see it now. But uh, topic one, so the stories, narrative, <laughs> this is team, co-working, collaboration, and this is implementation. So it's kind of smaller uh, mm -hmm. with eigenvalue, the, the, the consistency of 2.7. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, and then we try to bring words or complementing. So the, the, the paper is, okay, can we bring words to this topic? Can we support or, or mm. even question mm. words that are there that shouldn't be or uh, mm. lacking? And what, what did you find? Or is that the, the next research question? Yeah, we're, we're still writing this, uh, the, the paper. So it's still mm. uh, uh, ongoing. Uh, so uh, basically, Marisa, what I'm getting out of this, well, now, and I've read the article, uh, but now that you're telling about it, it yeah, it's, tends to uh, make more sense. But what you're saying is that um, there is a discourse around service design or within the service design community, only it's not that uh, tangible. And this paper tries to make it more tangible. And uh, it's, it's like um, emergent. It's not mm -hmm. to top down, yeah. but it's yes. trying to, to capture what is already uh, what is already there within the design field, but isn't described yet. Yes, uh, it's it's what uh, uh, actually Heidegger yeah. calls proto discourse, and it, proto -discourse. Uh, it, it's, we're learning uh, a lot about science. <laughs> <the> <laughs> uh, it's a, a kind of a call of conscience arising from a world already mm -hmm. meaningful but mm. not yet in language. Exactly. So we, we're doing this, but there's no we haven't described language it yet. Yeah, yeah. To, 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 to say things. How, how do you see this um, um, uh, translated in a practical way? So is this something companies will be using to um, formulate application briefs or uh, is yes. this something service designers will describe, will use to describe their skills how do you yes. see this benefiting yes. us yes the, the 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 main goal is to for us in a sense for for so uh i'm uh, working with sdn on the academic task task force so this type of research will provide the guidelines so what we should be teaching or mm. uh, complementing what we teach so mm. So in a practical sense to, for, for uh, training service designers, it points towards like yeah. uh, gaps <laughs> and uh, adjustment. But also, um, of course, we are in the United States, so we, we, we have a very uh, entrepreneurial take and how this can uh, benefit mm. companies. So of course, this will be translated also to uh, how, um, uh, HR recruiters will assess and uh, uh, hire service design for those. And and it's maybe also really useful to be used that um, you you're sort of setting a benchmark in in a really positive way because uh, when we have a benchmark as service designers, we can also say or better articulate how we are different or in which sense we specialize, right? Yeah. Yes. It, yes. It, it's yeah. setting it's setting a benchmark for what it means to be a service designer. Yeah. What what, what we capture here is it's uh, again the um, this connection systemic perspective yeah. for sure we see this so uh, the the whole story is behind this when you you you, you apply yeah. to this uh, literature review you see sense making in organizations how, what what we should do now why should we do this when yeah. should we do that so making sense of a service as a system yeah uh, and then team is the collaboration, co-creation, 
intervention made by uh, uh, buying. Uh, uh, so uh, conven it's a sense making process. Like mm. what we should do now. That's a, a, one of the questions. Uh, strategic question and strategic. I mean um, decisions that improve uh, organization organizational performance. Mm. So uh, in that sense, uh, service design is uh, strategic, uh, but we need to develop the implementing part. Hmm. Well, sure. Mauricio, so um, uh, maybe uh, uh, a, a question that, that you propose yourself is yeah. by, by setting this benchmark, by defining this language, um, uh, you you issued the worry that we might be isolating ourselves or creating new silos. How do you see that? No, no, no. That that's the point. That's the I guess if there was just a, a matter of uh, creating a silo, the the work would be a lot easier. <laughs> uh, but uh, how can we define ourselves in a way in an inclusive way? Okay, that, that, that we, we're very much uh, guided by critical thinking. So um, we, at some point, we don't, uh, we would prefer not to state precise characteristics, tools, mm -hmm. and methods. Mm -hmm. It should be that's uh, the, the 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 main uh, proposal of the the, the paper at uh, touch point. It's an overarching perspective. You will do. You will implement this the, the way you want, uh, the way you can in the organization, the con specific context you are in. Um, but we would like just to provide this, okay, how service design would look at it. Hmm. It's a perspective. It's not, uh, we hmm. don't, we it, would it's like- It's like you said, it's not yeah, a thank no, It's not, and it will be evolving. So if, uh, if there's any, uh, uh, there, there's no hope for us to uh, for uh, formalize uh, Ten Commandments at all. Of what it means to be a service designer, no, yeah. No, yeah, at yeah, all. Yeah. It's a yeah. it's a take. How we, do we approach things? It's a mm. way of approach. It's a mindset. Mm. It's not a, a characteristic uh, skill level. Yeah. No, yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So and, uh, no, we, and we do this. Uh, we make this so. Uh, very much into uh, micro, meso, and uh, macro level. So mm. it depends. You, you can apply this perspective to solve a very small thing or the whole organization. Mm. And uh, um, few resources. Uh, we, we were discussing with uh, two companies uh, back in uh, September. One had uh, very few... Uh, resources to in invest and and the other had five billion dollars to invest so mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. in both ways we can be there and mm -hmm. do something meaningful mm -hmm. how, how would you compare this um, uh, so maybe that I will even better understand compare this to a different profession or um, could, how would this apply to a lawyer what you are doing what are you defining or what are you not defining or yeah, the, the take is uh, to make sense of things. So uh, we, uh, so, so one of the, the things that we uh, provide or we are trying to provide for this paper is a background for these three topics. So we mm -hmm. say that the background for these topics it, uh, are actually service, the concept of service, systemic, holistic, interconnected based basically on service dominant logic uh, uh, and, uh, and the context of design. What's the difference, what's the difference between a design approach, an engineering approach or a management approach? Exactly, yeah. So those two will be the, the background, the scenario in which those three top, these three topics mm -hmm. come to life. Okay. Is there, is there um, a way you, the people who are watching this live uh, episode or watching their recording can contribute or can read more about this? Could you use any help? 
actually, uh, the, what I usually <laughs> tell in class, the, the, the sentence that I love the most is, I have a question. So, Vassar, I have a question. So, uh, if people have a uh, oh, I, uh, or like, I, I, I can't grasp this. I'm not understanding. So, just ask, and our job will be trying to explain this. Mm. Will will create the discourse. Mm. So again, it's a proto discourse. So the more people ask, no, um, simple question like, please, could you yeah. clarify this? Yeah, yeah, could yeah. You explain more that. You need well, more questions. That's yeah, more what questions. You, yeah, you need more questions to know yeah. what to explain better yes. or better articulate. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and I, I like again. I posted the link to the uh, article in that was published in Touchpoint. That's basically the paper you were talking about, right? Yeah, uh, in Touchpoint, we 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 made uh, as as it's supposed to be. It's a a, a, a journal to mm -hmm. the to a broader audience. So we mm -hmm. try to make it some summarizing the the, the idea in a, in a nutshell. But um, I, I hope with this, the next uh, paper will be more, let's say, academic and be more precise into the explanation. But the, the three main uh, uh, perspectives are understanding stakeholders' context. So in a broad sense, mapping the stakeholders and understanding the word understand, understanding is, is, is really important to this thing. The other one would be understanding innovation dynamics. So how mm. innovation happens, how can change be made? And the other one would be understanding institutional transition or implementation. Like how can I move people from A to B in a way that everybody feels better after than before. And I, I think um, these, we, we also talked about these three topics during our regular service design show episode. Mm -hmm. I posted the link as a comment. So uh, uh, when should that new article be out? When do you hope to publish it or share, share it with a broad uh, audience? In, in the next, by, by <laughs> the end of next semester, uh, we, we don't uh, think in semesters. Uh, we think in months. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess it will be it will be uh, published in 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 June 2018. But I I, um, I will probably publish some kind of summary of this before on on LinkedIn or okay. somewhere mm -hmm. like this. Yeah. So if if people have questions, uh, what should they do? They can comment on this post. They can get in touch with you via LinkedIn. Is that yeah, what is the best yeah. way to to post questions to you? Yes, they they can just uh, ask on on connect on LinkedIn or Facebook or here. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to ask uh, the audience. Yeah, go ahead. Like, yeah. Is there any question uh, idea that you would like to share and? Uh, comment if so please do uh, i would be really pleased to and uh, you'll to also be around after after we ended this broadcast you'll be checking the uh the comments on um yeah on this video richard is asking a question i'll share it on screen let's go oh, so yeah. richard is asking mariso at what level do you expect your graduates to begin within an organization because I see almost no entry level position with positions within service organizations. Um, often only very senior levels are recruited. Great question. Great question, Richard. We, we're, we're, as uh, I mentioned in, the, in the, the previous interview that we had, Mark, uh, we are uh, connect, uh, contacted by several HR uh, managers and, and recruiters of uh, several mm. companies saying, um, that they want to hire service designers, they see the, the value of it, and they usually ask for five years of experience or in uh, what we are seeing, because these people with five years, 10 years of experience, they, they are not available. Exactly. Okay. 
So our students, when we have one of the highest uh, employment rates here at, uh, at SCAD, uh, SCAD as a whole has a high, uh, one, uh, very high employment rate for our graduates, but our students, uh, just to, to, to put this in, in, in numbers, we, we are a small program at SCAD. We graduate around 15 students a year and we are with over 100 open positions available in companies. So all of our students get jobs. And uh, usually the, the, the jobs uh, are, uh, although they, they ask for three years of experience, five years of experience, at the end, our students get hired for these positions anyway. Hmm. So, so what's the deal there? What, what's happening? Uh, just apply. Don't don't but, don't. Take... But why do why do they ask for three to five years and then hire uh, a junior? Because they want to have someone with experience, ten years of experience. So, but we we are a very small community. Mm -hmm. so, uh, when I say we have one hundred open positions, if you think about management, they mm -hmm. have one hundred thousand open positions. We have mm -hmm. just one hundred. Mm. Okay. And it's even hard to fill those in. Yes, and there's a, a, a demand with not enough supply. So, and, and uh, just to, and we've seen this often. So, uh, at, at first, the company, okay, we're going to hire, they interview the, the candidates, uh, one of our students, and they, they, they are pleased by what they see. They hire this mm. uh junior as a junior research uh, um, researcher and and we see a lot of things happening like they hire the first and then they hire the second they hire the third and then and the floodgates we, open yeah yeah <laughs> and then they are uh, we 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 saw companies that uh, are actually structuring their uh, service design department based on our students mm. you know, on undergrads um, so, so, you know, that's a really nice thing. That's a really, it, it's hard to be a service designer because you still have a lot of explaining and evangelizing to do. But at the same time, it's an open playing field. You can create your own profession and your own yes. uh, work yeah. environment, right? That's that's the awesome thing. Yeah, but uh, good that you talk about this because we should keep that always like this. Service yeah. design, I don't see service design as a, any profession actually but service design especially it's an open-ended thing mm -hmm. we have to cope with the systemic uh, perspective of things so um, it's ever-changing and, mm -hmm. and this is something that we try to instill on in our students here like keep updated keep broad uh, mm -hmm. as uh, Steve Jobs say keep uh, thirsty and hungry and uh, keep this um, mm -hmm. yeah. um any any final uh thoughts comments tips except uh keep broad <laughs> i guess i guess the 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 tip for for service design as a whole is to get um uh, better scientific uh, base uh, uh, foundations we, we do a lot of research we try to understand these complex systems so complex adaptive systems uh, um, next quarter I'll be teaching a, a class uh, focus on complex adaptive systems so how system moves and, and changes and adapt um, so uh, and it's uh, please don't don't take this as a being academic 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 is one thing science is another academia reproduces knowledge science creates knowledge question things uh, yeah. academia says replicates and reproduce and, and, and it's an industrial process science is a question process always questioning always broadening and and um, so I, I guess the, the 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 main thing would be like understand service dominant logic 
Um, Google it if you don't know what it is. Yeah. Search Demon and Logic. Awesome, yeah. awesome concept. Yeah, Search Demon and Logic, uh, scientific methods, mm. and um, complex adaptive systems. We 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 thrive in that scenario. Mm. The 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 value, and we we've been uh, dealing a lot with companies here. They they. They are eager. The, the The scenario is complex today. It's ever changing. You need to have someone that that has this focus on the system, like focus, where, the broad focus. That's the interesting. Broad focus, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we've been uh, up for I think forty minutes in this episode, so uh, I think uh, I think we talked enough. It's more than uh, the the regular episode. Yeah. Um, we'll be uh, we'll be doing a live uh, episode number two next week, and uh, next week uh, I'll be hosted. I'll be joined by two guests, and we'll be discussing the global service design. Conference. Network conference that was in Madrid. The highlights, uh, I think, two people who actually presented there in Madrid. So we'll be um, hearing their highlights and hearing their stories because you weren't in Madrid. I wasn't either. Uh, yeah. So um, I, I really want to know what, what happened uh, there. Yeah, my, my colleague, uh, Zina Vilada, she was on a, one of the keynote speakers and she, she said it was really amazing. Hmm. It's um, yeah. You're invited to join uh, next uh, next week, Mauricio, as a as a viewer. I'll be posting. I'll be sharing the link just like with this uh, live episode um, okay. in in the coming days. Thanks for joining me on this uh, first prototype, uh, Mauricio. Uh, it was nice. Yeah. Uh, if you people who are watching, if you haven't subscribed to the Service Design Show, you know. Uh, like the Facebook page, check out what's happening on YouTube, youtube.com slash service design show. Uh, you'll get a new episode every two weeks with smaller pieces of content throughout the week. And if you prefer to listen to podcasts, uh, it's available at service design show.com slash podcast. Uh, and it's getting a lot of uh, listeners lately. So yeah, it's, um, it's, it's worth checking out. And finally, um, we're doing a course on what I call selling service design with confidence. And, uh, yeah, I think that that also relates to your topic that we need to spread service design beyond the service design community. So that's, yeah. um, that's what I'm focusing on with this course. Awesome. Uh, if you want to know more about the course, uh, check out it's learn.servicedesignshow.com. You'll find the course there. Uh, home. A lot of talking. Mauricio, uh, mm. it's time for you to start your day at uh, almost okay. 9, uh, 9 a.m. It's time for me to get back to work. <laughs> okay. Thanks for being. Uh, I, I see some more comments uh, coming in, but we'll respond in chat uh, on the uh, Facebook post. Thanks, Richard. Thanks, everyone, for being in. Thanks, Marcel. Uh, hopefully see you in the next live episode next week. Thanks, Mauricio. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Always a pleasure. See you. See you. Bye.